What I'm fascinated by is how we prosecute a military affair with Israeli forces, okay, fine, against terrorist groups. We've never really done this, have we? Well, I mean, you, you could argue that the uh, our response after 9-11 when we went to, into Afghanistan first to displace the Taliban and then, of sure. course, the pursuit of, uh, of, of, um, uh, of uh, al-Qaeda and eventually uh, ISIS, et cetera, was part of that. We, of course, yes, we went after ISIS in Syria as well. So, uh, but I get your point. Look, it's it's very tough. You have a con an army built for com big, heavy conventional fights, an extraordinary uh, soft capability going into a heavily populated uh, dense area trying to root out militants among the public and having to fight in multiple dimensions, right? On the ground, above the ground, and below the ground. And it's going to be quite a bloody and messy affair. What would the Screaming Eagles do? I mean, I, you know, you've got tangible experience here. Do they do a massive bombardment a la World War II, say, and then go in? Or do you expect them to prosecute something different? Look, I think we've seen the bombardment so, so far. At some point, they're going to have to move in and go street by street, block by block. I think part of re the reason why you see so many airstrikes is they're, they're rubbling buildings. Uh, I will tell you, you know, you refer back to my time with the 101st Airborne. When we were in southern Iraq in the, at the uh, Gulf War, we did we wanted to avoid cities because uh, city fighting is really tough. It consumes a lot of soldiers, uh, not just those you lose, but you have to leave people behind. And again, when you're fighting in multiple dimensions, this is really tough. So I think they go block by block being very careful to avoid civilian, civilian casualties. At some point, they occupy. But the really big question that we don't know yet is what's the end state? What happens when they're done? Because at some point, they're going to pull out. They want to pull out. And do you, what vacuum do you create? Do you somehow politically get the Palestinian Authority to come in? Is there uh, some type of inter-Arab peace peacekeeping group that comes in? Those are the big unanswered questions. That what does the end state look like? Secretary, you were defense secretary under the former President Trump. How would have his response been different to what we're seeing today? I, I'm not sure that it would be different in this moment. I, I would argue that it would be different with regard to Ukraine and other countries. But with Israel, Israel given the close connections between our countries, our peoples, um, so much that's shared between our two countries, I'm not sure it, it would be that much different. Um, although I would say that I think Trump would probably take a harder line uh, and, and a more public line against Iran. Um, I've argued for that in the past. I, I know Secretary of State Pompeo has. And I would like to see more from the Biden administration about connecting the dots back to Iran, because I think at the end of the day, uh, while Israel can go in and decapitate Hamas and, and try and suppress them, unless you deal with the country, Iran again, who's funding and training and supporting them, then I think Hamas, Hamas just crops back up over time. 